welcome students to one more session of your general organic chemistry so till now we have done a lot of different different concepts i taught you what are the different electron displacement uh, uh, forms that is your inductive effect hyperconjugation um, electromeric effect mesomeric effect and that also i've taught you you know plus m minus m in inductive effect i've taught plus i minus i group like that i've covered all the topics after that i've taught you a topic that is yeah, you know metamerism tautomerism i also have taught you the concept of hydrogen bonding in the previous video so the last video which i discovered discussed uh, was hydrogen bonding and the effects of hydrogen bonding or the important questions on hydrogen bonding now in today's topic we are going to discuss the next topic that is reaction intermediates done so after the electron displacement effects let's directly come to this that is reaction intermediates so basically whenever you're studying in chemistry there are different different reaction intermediates which are formed when you perform a reaction different intermediates are formed what are they let us list out so we have a reaction intermediate called carbocation which is formed carbocation right this denoted by the positive charge then yes so we have one more class of reaction intermediates those are called as carbanions okay right it is denoted by the negative charge we have one more category called uh, intermediate called free radicals which are formed we denote free radicals by <coughs> a dot that also i'll show you right after free radicals one more category which is formed as in reaction intermediate are called carbenes right. after carbenes there is one more category which are formed are called nitrines done right. yes for all of these we'll be studying the preparations we'll be studying the structures we'll be seeing uh, how are these formed like in which which name reactions these are formed all the information i'll be giving you right so first important thing let us start with the preparations of these reaction intermediates now so when i start with the first preparation right let us write the heading preparation of first carbocations i'll be taking how are these prepare or how are these uh, form during which reaction these are formed so basically when i take the preparation of carbocation i can prepare or we can see the formation of carbocation in simple thing that is heterolytic fission fission that is the first important reaction where i can show you the formation of carbocation right heterolytic fission okay so hetero we have basically two types of fissions isn't it fission means breakage homo means two equal halves hetero means two different means two equal halves both atoms will be similar in heterolytic both the atoms will be different right so suppose if i have to form the carbocation i said carbocation is denoted by what it is denoted like this c plus that right? so this is be like right so this is your positive charge first in heterolytic uh, fission i said for example if i take now i have see here now it is heterolytic because two atoms are different homo means both will be similar hetero means two will be different right now when there's a fission happening here right so there is a pair i'm exp i'm denoting the uh, electron pair like this one by dot one by cross so when there is a cleavage in this direction what happens this halogen whatever is there is highly electronegative it will try to drag the electron density towards itself when it drags what will happen it will break up into two equal halves one x that is which is electronegative is going to take or pull up the shade pair of electron and the left out carbocation is going to form this is how the carbocation is formed now if i have to see the next formation i can show you protonation of alkenes so alkenes when they are protonated when in h plus protonation of alkenes so what is protonation protonation means okay let me draw this line protonation means addition of a proton h plus we are adding h plus to this for an alkene when i add h plus to the alkene how does it form let us see now i'm taking an alkene double bonded around carbon 4 here to this i'm adding a proton when i add a proton what will happen there is a cleavage of this bond isn't it yeah the bond and what is it how does it look there is here right so one this proton <coughs> the, this particular bond is broken and it is pulled out by this so part of this is uh, broken one is shaded by this carbon one is shaded by this carbon so this proton comes and attacks this carbon so it becomes c plus <coughs> single a bond is formed h and h see here there is a carbocation formation yes or no yes now let's see one more now we'll see again uh, the formation or the preparation of carbocat uh, carbocation from alcohols it's the same concept again it is also same protonation let us take protonation as i said it is addition of h plus so protonation of alcohols 
that so again i'll be adding h plus only to alcohols in the earlier case i've added to alkenes now i'll be adding to alcohols so alcohols let me take r o h it's an alcohol now i'll be protonating this to evidence that means i'll be adding once i add what will happen you have this also as uh, a mechanism in ncrt hydration of alcohols that is no hydration um, their protonation step will also come during adding that uh, h plus i got right so it's an ncrt equation see the mechanism now first thing during a protein issue when i'm adding this right right just see here this proton is going to go and adding to this particular oxygen it's protonating how does this look this is your r this is your oxygen lone pair of electron plus because one bond is shared by this one is hydrogen one more is hydrogen further what's going to happen here see here when i say r that's nothing but alkyl group isn't it yeah there is a cleavage of the bond here like this water molecule comes out and what is formed now yeah see here you see here r ch2 means there is one group already there so i'm showing that as r ch2 okay that is plus then so this is how is a formation of a carbocation a preparation of carbocation this is the first step this is the second step this is the third step now let's come back and see the preparations of your carbanions so let us write we'll be learning preparations of carbanion the next reaction intermediate carban ion or carbonium ion right so here the carbanion it is denoted by what it is denoted by c minus this is again right fine so in carbonion formation the simplest method again i'll be taking heterolytic fusion only heterolytic fusion this is the same thing which we have used for carbonium ion suppose which one heterolytic fusion i'm going to show you the heterolytic fusion of uh, alkenes okay i'll be taking alkenes and doing it suppose if i take an alkene that is your methyl so here what's going to happen here there's a lone pair okay uh, one denoted by dot <coughs> one is denoted by x but here the alkene i said one more hydrogen is here so what's going to happen when there is a fusion heterolytic means two different when there is a fusion here observe carefully the shade this pair of electron is pulled up by this methyl group when it's pulling up it's getting excess isn't it it's becoming ch3 minus one pair of electron is pulled up by this and the leftover is proton fine right so this is how it's forming this is the way we we are going to prepare carbanions this is how because one electron pair this pair of electron is pulled up by the methyl group means it is shared by it's pulled by this i should not say shared it is pulled by this so when this is pulled by this what will be left out it is excess of electrons here in the leftover h plus is here done now let's see the preparations of free radicals in the next page and the big uh, full page so when i have to speak about the third reaction intermediate so preparation of free radicals so when i have to speak about free radicals free radicals are very short lived species very short lived again here i'll be showing free radical formation we have different different examples just specifically i've picked a few only here i'll be speaking about the formation of free radicals in homolytic fission homolytic means what as i said homo means between two similar atoms suppose if i have an element means a particular atom like this both are homo okay simple the same thing now suppose if i have a specific example see here br and br or cl and cl okay both are similar now suppose when the, this is exposed to sunlight okay this is broken up into free radicals one and one it's the same with br also it's the same with cl also suppose if i introduce but important thing is it occurs in the presence of sunlight so when it occurs there's a cleavage of the bond and it forms chlorine free radical and one more chlorine free radical let us take one more example suppose if i take in a long chain alkene like this suppose if this is exposed to h nu light right so there is what does it do in the presence of sunlight homolytic fission occurs yeah and what is it going to form it's going to form free radicals two different free radicals where just see here first important thing i'm taking it here ch3 ch free radical 
CH3 plus H plus. See, this is how the free radical is formed. Now, let us see the formation of free radical by one more method. What is that method? Let's see. There is a process called thermolysis. Hope you would have seen the thermolysis process. Thermo means in the presence of heat because I said free radicals are formed only in the presence of heat. Thermolysis means lysing a molecule, an organic molecule in the presence of heat. That is thermolysis. So in thermolysis, what are we going to do? We are going to take an organic molecule. I am preparing free radicals now, right? So I am going to take an organic molecule. What will I do? I will introduce this to high temperatures. So when I introduce or take this organic molecule high temperature in uh, means in gas phase. I am going to take this the high temperature and the gas phase. What is going to happen? Free radicals are going to form. Let us see taking one example. Right. Suppose I have just see here pH C double bond O O H. Now I am heating this. Now this is a peroxide, isn't it? Now I am heating it high temperature that is almost 80 degrees to 100 degrees centigrade. When I heat this, what will happen? There is a lyse, it means there is, see, homo, this means a thermolysis. Thermolysis, we are lysing using temperature, high temperature or heat. This particular molecule I am going to cleave. Where will it cleave? <coughs> exactly, this is a peroxide you need to hold and exactly it is going to cleave here in between oxygen. When it cleaves, this is one molecule, this is one molecule. Together I will be writing this 2. So, copy the same thing. It is pH, C, double bond O, oxygen. Correct? Yes. So, now what is going to happen? This bond, whatever is there, okay? This particular thing is going to shift. Then, when this shifts here, what is going to happen? This also shifts. And finally, what do I get? There is a cleavage of the bond here. And two phenyl free radicals are formed and carbon dioxide is out. So, here this is a, we, we try to prepare one free radical using the thermolysis. See here I have used. So, what will happen because why is this cleaving? Because the bond energy of oxygen, whatever bond energy of oxygen is there, that is you know very small, that is only 30 kilocalories per mole. That is why there is a cleavage at peroxide. If somebody asks you why at peroxide only, then why it is not cleaving somewhere here, you can say since bone enthalpy, bone enthalpy of oxygen and oxygen, how much is it? It is only 30 kilocalories per mole. That is why we are cleaving it here. This is how your free radicals are prepared. Now let's come back and see the preparation of carbenes. The next free radical, next uh, reaction intermediate preparation of carbenes. Right. So carbenes basically are denoted by C. This is how you represent your carbene. How will I prepare? Here I'm going to prepare carbene from haloform reaction. Haloform. Okay, so what is halo form? It is nothing but CHX3. I am not specifically saying if I take iodine, it will become iodoform. In, in case of X3, if I take iodine, it will become iodoform. But here it is called halo form. This halo form reaction, what are we going to introduce? We have to introduce alcoholic KOH, isn't it? So when I introduce alcoholic KOH, there is a cleavage of this, and what will come out? Hydrogen is out and CX3 minus. Further, this gets converted to CX2, the same thing, <coughs> plus X minus. So now this, yeah, this is your halo, this is your carbene. Now it is with halogen, isn't it? So we call this as halo carbene. Halo carbene. This is how the carbenes are prepared. Now let's come back and prepare nitrines. The last class of reaction intermediates that is preparation of nitrines. Nitrines basically are denoted by, like if I have to uh, specifically see, I am taking with an alkyl group, nitrines. This is how you are going to show. How will I prepare this? I can prepare nitrine in the presence of light. How does it do? Let us take one first example. 
I'm going to take an alkyl group that is nothing but RN3. So I'm writing it here in this way. Okay, RN3. This is when introduced in the presence of H nu, when you, in the form in the presence of a photon. What will happen? There is a cleavage. This bond is broken. Yeah, here exactly there is exactly cleavage. And what will happen? This nitrogen comes out in the form of a triple bond, and the leftover R N one two three four five and six. Right. So this is this is where it's called, or this is how the nitrine ray is formed. Done. Fine. So further, let's see one more. I can also prepare nitrine from taking a different example that is called diazomethane. What is diazomethane? Let's see. From diazomethane. What is diazomethane? Diazo means N. <coughs> Azo is nothing but nitrogen. N triple. Okay. In double bond because I am linking this with CH2. CH2. This is plus, this is minus. When you are introducing this diazomethane, because we have written this diazomethane, we are introducing the presence of sunlight. First important thing, this nitrogen. Right, okay, I think a uh, little bit uh, this one I did, okay. Uh, <coughs> where will it cleave? The nitrogen part we are taking diazomethane that's fine but here what is it cleaving it's cleaving here at this point into but important thing we are forming a carbene here just see here this is what you is a small thing change here we are trying to prepare carbene let's see this this particular thing reaction here halo form and one is carbene i've explained here only nitrogen i've explained one reaction here we are trying to prepare carbenes i'm sorry for that just noted carbene this is nitrine so these are the different preparation students let me see what what have i uh, taught you first thing i have taught you let me take one after the other i have taught you the preparation of carbocation then i have taught you first one we have discussed what are the different reaction intermediates then we have seen the preparation of carbocation after reaction of carbocation then i have taught you the preparation of carbanions isn't it right so we have seen the preparation of carbanions this is the preparation after carbanions i have taught you the preparation of next one that is free radicals in free radicals we have studied two preparations one is homolytic fission and one more is thermolysis thermolysis after thermolysis gradually i taught you the preparation of carbenes so this is one preparation of carbene and the second preparation is this this is the second preparation then the last reaction intermediate that is nitrine i have prepared nitrine i've shown you here this is the preparation for nitrine so let's say this is done we are done with the preparations of reaction intermediates i'll meet you again in the next video with the structure of the reaction intermediate students thank you for watching